What's happening, people? Back with another Gemini Man riff, and we're back with the first proper episode, so it's given the catalog number one, and it's called Smithereens. Now, Mystery Science Theater fans will know this one because it was the first half of the made-for-TV movie Riding with Death, which is to say, a few years after this show aired, and again, it was only about half of the season that aired before it was canceled, they eventually released a two-episode mashed-together made-for-TV movie called Riding with Death. It features this episode and then a much later one near the end of the show, which actually never aired in the original run, because it features the same guest characters. And then they eventually watched Riding with Death on Mystery Science Theater, and that was my first introduction to Gemini Man. So this episode in particular is the first Gemini Man I ever saw, although it is edited differently, which is to say, in Riding with Death, they have to explain why he can turn invisible, so they occasionally do these flashback shots where they use footage from the pilot episode that we already saw, although the way they edit it together is actually quite silly. Now, you won't see that here, because again, this assumes that you've seen the pilot. In any case, let's get straight to it. This is Gemini Man, Smithereens, the first proper episode. Three, two, one, go. This is Lazy Rider. Clear the path. I'm a runaway. I repeat, I'm a runaway. <laughs> Take care of these and I'll uh, call the county mountain. Let's go. Get up. Sam, stop. Hey, what are you doing? Get out of here. Hey, so these are, the are the episode I'm highlights? Gonna break out of town. There's going to be no town. Then why are you telling us? I don't remember asking. Right, the Casio stabilizer. And his awful jacket. Did someone get Abby a brush? Silhouette crotch attack. Parking in the rear. French subtitle apparently refused to leave the set. No, it's the guy with the jacket again. The editor was like, to hell with all this dialogue. You gotta love the commitment of a fully horizontal dive. I feel like the guy with the glasses here was the official spokesperson of the 70s. I'm one of the good guys. Huh? Yeah, Thanks, but Casey. that jacket. Oh, intersect. Oh, of course, of course. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm Dr. Arthur Hale of Intersect's Technological Division. Also, Larry David's stand-in. I was supposed to meet Mr. Driscoll 15 minutes ago. <laughs> it's all right, so was I. Listen, you got any idea who those turkeys were? Well, let's just say that Mr. Driscoll will get into that after Don't the rub briefing. your suitcase like that. All right. So... Anyone want to say anything? Feel free to chime in, South America. Tripolidine. Dr. Hale's new fuel additives. 
So called because it triples vehicular mileage. Right. By the way, why does your face look so different? 70 miles to one gallon? On one gallon of the mixture, yes. Cars with special carburetors did even better. And trucks with special trucker baiters did even better than that. Congratulations, Dr. Hill. This certainly will reduce our dependence on foreign oil. Yeah, but then uh, one man's meat's another man's poison. Meaning that certain foreign oil interests won't be overjoyed. True enough. It could obviously cost them billions. You saw what happened in the parking lot. But how did they find out? A security leak, unhappily. Not at Intersect? No, no, no. In Washington, I'm afraid. Anyway, I'm going to go See, sandblast last my glasses. Week I contacted federal authorities and told them we plan to deliver two gallons of tripolidine to the Federal Energy Commission's branch office in Long Beach. Sam's going to transport it in his certified. pants. My purpose was to request an army convoy. Within a matter of hours, Mr. Driscoll had a call from the head of an international oil combine. They wanted to buy all the rights to tripolidine. But he was too busy the cleaning his glasses to answer it. Of course. That's why I urged Mr. Driscoll to get the additive to the Federal Energy Commission as quickly as possible. I also Today urged Sam tomorrow. to ditch that awful jacket, but apparently Operation he ignored me. will begin at precisely 0500 hours when an army convoy will depart the laboratory. But, in view of the security breach and just between the four of us... I hate you. That convoy will be a decoy and will not be carrying the tripolidine. All right, so who will? You will, Sam. Sam, in precisely 600 hours, this rig will arrive at Dr. Hale's laboratory, and you will be at the wheel. Let's take a look inside. This is like the pedestrian equivalent of a parking scene. Dr. Hale has devised this chamber, constructed a bullet-resisting armor plate. That's right. Now, Dr. Hale, we're right in here. Whoa, did Jessica just hit the helium? His special equipment used in the refining process and all his secret formulas. Okay, I think I get it. If we run into any trouble, then Dr. Hale can hold out in here until help arrives. Is that the idea? Right. Now, Sam, the Federal Energy Agency closes tomorrow at 1800 hours. Your mission is to protect Dr. Hale and get this rig to Long Beach on time. Well, now, Leonard, I tell you, there's only one problem with me driving this rig. Well, what's that? I haven't got a union card. Boom, boom, boom. This is Overview. Army Convoy has picked up material at secret base as ordered. Now approaching Checkpoint Charlie. After which Roger we're going to go hang out with the Airwolf guys. Sam, are you in position yet? Affirmative, Big Daddy. I just arrived at the lab. Good. Proceed with operation. Out. Well, what do you think, Doctor? You about ready to move out? Well, you just bring about. me down. No Don't mess around. Okay. Move out. matter it's an oversight i just realized that a piece of equipment i have stored in a warehouse in dawson is absolutely indispensable and very no x-rated we can stop on the way and pick it up we'll be behind schedule yeah not if we leave now well fine i'm ready all righty wonder what sam's trucker call sign is tight pants floppy locks And for those of you who don't know, Southern California really does look like that everywhere. Yep, sure does look like that. Convoy to intersect. We are now passing checkpoint Delta. Roger, Colonel. We will change frequency channel as per planned at this time. Leonard, wait. Please hold this channel. Who is this? It's Abby. Abby, where are you? The Army convoy has left and the operation's underway. I know that. I'm on my way to Hale's lab. Why? 
Well, Sam was supposed to meet me last night to synchronize his life system with my recorder. If you know what I'm saying. Blonde in the commissary and... I know, I know, I know. And disappeared. Well, go. You still got 40 minutes. Righto. Well, I can't sing, but I don't care. And as long as my CB radio's here, I'm on there. Brace yourself, folks. I'm on there. I ain't got no record, ain't got no band, but I got me a song about a truck driving man, and I'm on there. I said, I'm on there. I'm on there. I said, I'm on there. Yeah, encore, encore. Do well, not there, encourage him. It's Lazy Rider here. Buffalo Bill, howdy. Howdy, Buffalo, where you rolling? Uh, Route 4, passing pale. Hey, what do you know? I'm right on your back door, buddy. Good, you can keep the black barks off my mud flaps. Please don't ever the mention hijackers. your mud flaps. They hit along this route five times last month. I uh, got you. Ten four. Sam. Yo. Are we on schedule? Uh, we're ten minutes ahead, Doctor. Fine, thank you. I'm going to start to work on the patent applications. Yeah, whatever, dude. Okie dokie. This is like a documentary about a parking scene. Gasoline. You want to expand on that, Abby? Foof. known for her care around the office. So no one in wardrobe said anything? Spring I've ever seen. Bruce Willis crawls by with bloody feet. Whatever you think of Abby, you have to give her a passing grade for her person jacket coordination. He's doing some cocaine right now. Yes? Miss Lawrence on six. Abby? Leonard, listen to me. This whole thing is a fraud. Abby! Sam is in terrible trouble. Tripolidine is chemically unstable. Hello, hello. Grace, I've been cut off. Its molecular structure breaks down, and it transforms itself into an explosive more violent than nitroglycerin. I don't know how long it takes. But just a couple of drops on a tissue nearly blew this whole room apart. Did it really? The slightest jar in that truck that Sam is driving. And he's gonna be blown to smithereens. Leonard. Leonard. Are you there? Because I'm not repeating all that. I doubt it very much. No way, my 
my girl. No way. Put her in the copter. When you want to stretch out the runtime without adding any dialogue. In there. You don't say. sign for this stuff? Yep, one Abby in a bag, check. Dr. Hale says to tell you this bag isn't even his. You see there. Dummy, it's not even from his locker. Put it back. Let me change that invoice, will you? Okay, there you go. All right, thank you. Right. I'm Ben Murphy, and I make these faces for a living. Ta-da! Nice, delicate improvisation, Stark. Miss Nosy, I mean. Yeah, kind of guarantees a total disappearance. Uh-huh. Along with mine, allegedly. <laughs> Charver's out back. Good, let's get going. Just trucking with Sam in real time here. How you riding back there, Doctor? All fine, Sam, just fine. Uh, but I'm working on my uh, patent papers, and I really would appreciate it if you didn't disturb me. Because I'm a petty jerk, you see. You didn't give yourself much leeway. Plenty. In every experiment I conducted, it took nearly three hours for the molecular structure to break down. I wonder how Intersect's going to feel when they learn that Dr. Hale, together with all the secrets for Tribality, have been blown sky high by the agents of the International Oil Cartel. Do we have a tracking number for Abby? How long now? The first good bump in the road. But then suddenly, the world was plunged into darkness. Now, did Abby make contact for synchronization exercise? Make contact where? At the lab! All right, no, no more caffeine then, for Driscoll. Uh, we left a little ahead of schedule, Leonard. Meanwhile, Abby continues to hatch. Well, she didn't find you at the lab. She's probably trying to overtake. She said you're nearly a minute out of sync. Yeah, which way? I don't know. But according to my recorder, you got 14 minutes and 10 seconds of invisibility left. Yeah, well, that's my reading, too, Leonard. Well, maybe it's Abby that's out of sync. But she reaches you, have her contact me, too. 10-4. The 
newly, fully grown Abby emerges from her larval state. Oh no, not the mouthwash! You know, you could turn on the radio, Sam. Time for a nice little picnic. There you go, honey. Take a little nap now. Sam! Sam, stop! It's Abby! You want to write me about any personal problems? Sam, we're gonna blow up! We're about halfway there, Dr. Hale. Well, that's fine, Sam. Fine. But I am trying to concentrate on these patent papers. I'm sorry. Do a gymnastic routine while I wait. Abby later mentored a young MacGyver after leaving Intersect. Downshifting action. Keep your hands inside, Buster. Hey, anything you say, pal. What the? What's wrong? He's gone. Must be a hidey hole in there somewhere. Also, I want to practice my diving skills real quick. It's a 15 yard penalty for a horse call or tackle. Some good 70s Black punches bars. there. Lazy Rider, Buffalo Bill. Good to meet you. Nice to see you. You're a regular one man arm, ain't you? Well, a little fancy footwork, that's all. <laughs> Why don't you uh, take care of these and I'll uh, call the county mounty. I'm not okay. sold on Buffalo's ascot. Hey, boys. Smoke is gonna put you in the pokey. Let's go. Get up. Come on. Come on. Let's join your friends. Let's go. Yeah. Get together. Make a little group there, huh? Sam! Sam! Could that be switched to a library voice, please? Oh, good. Listen, I gotta get moving. I got a schedule to keep. Can you uh, handle it from here? Yeah, sure. And uh, thanks, buddy. Hey, no problem. And the bandits immediately took the gun back from Buffalo and killed him. Please, Lord. Convince Sam to get Not rid of his jacket. And let all our bumps be little bumps. Sam's sense of longing is here represented by the Oba. Howdy. Fill her up. Is that Sean Bean?
Stop making that face. Okay, we get it, Sam. You're a gurning champion. Now just chill out. Casey to intersect. Mr. Driscoll, Sam Casey on three. I'm busy eating a pencil, thanks. Yes, Sam. Leonard, I got a chopper. Seems to be hanging around. Registration number 20 Delta Bravo. Check it out with the FAA for me, will you? Stop playing with your nipple, Delta Driscoll. Bravo will do. Have you heard from Abby? Negative. I'll get you later, Leonard. Whatever, they didn't give me any lines. So we're surveilling them, surveilling him. Uh, Sam? Yo? In studying our schedule, I see that we should have cleared Cedarville by 2.30. Looks like we're running half an hour late. I'd like you to step on it. Oh, sure. And go bumpity bump. Oh. Say no, Sam! Word is, Abby's an expert in bumpity bump. Easy rider here. I'm clearing Cedarville and heading west. Have I got a front door? Sure have, good buddy. Little old Buffalo Bill. Hey, Buffalo. I got a problem. I got to burn some rubber, buddy, and I can't abide any Smokies. Well, the road's clean, but uh, looks like a bear in the air back your way. Yeah, I got my sights on him, Bill, but that's no Smoky. Okay, lazy rider. Let's lay that hammer down. Get out of my way, oh, roll all over you. Stand back, Skyway, get out of my way, the buffalo's coming through. Well, I got myself a mean machine, and we're blasting fast and burning clean. I said, lay down, highway, I'm rolling all over you. Come on, roll, roll, roll all over you. Come on, roll, roll, roll all over you. I got myself a clean machine, and we're blasting fast and burning clean. I said, lay down, highway, I'm rolling all over you. Uh, Buffalo, I think I'm going to work on my patent papers now, so can you shut up? I said, stand back, Skyway, get out of my way, the buffalo's coming through. I said, lay down, highway, I'm rolling all over you. Woo! Wow! Abby speaks for all of us who just heard that. Ah! I don't get it. The Tripolidine should be bouncing around like a bowling ball by now. There's only one possible explanation. Somehow, Truck that girl has managed to free herself and she's done something to neutralize the vibration. Well, he'll be in Desmond soon. That should do it. Am I supposed to know something about Desmond? I didn't do the pre-reading for the episode, people. Yes, Sam? Yes, sir. It's riding very rough back here. I wish you were back here oh, to comfort really? me. Did you say that again. I think one of our shocks is gone. Why don't you pull into the next service station and have them check it out? We certainly don't want to end up in a ditch, do we? Well, I'd never forgive myself if anyone got hurt. Oh. <gasps> At least Abby's retained her wry sense of humor. Desmond, famous for its $2 lube jobs. Take a look at my shocks, will you? Sure. Also, that is a delightful perm.
Casey. Sam, the chopper belongs to Aircraft Leasing Incorporated in Hayden. It was rented out last night to a man named Luther Stark. Luther Stark, huh? Yeah, miscreant uh, third cousin of Tony. Name, huh? No, 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 no. Uh, he had to show his pilot's license. Anyway, we're running a top priority check with the FBI, CIA, Interpol. A guy named Jeff. Hold it, hold it, hold it, Sam. Just got to tell it, Sam. <laughs> well, obviously the eccentric Dr. Hale didn't fully trust our security measures and has laid on a little extra protection of his own. What do you mean, Leonard? Wait a minute, I don't get the connection. There's teletypes from the Canadian Royal Mounted Police in Toronto. It says A. Seems a few years back, Dr. Hale was doing some kind of research at Brownell University. There was an arsonist-type fire in his lab, and the man who pulled Hale out was Luther Stark. Obviously, also, what Hale do you think of my lion rampant tie? In that chopper. Surveillance? <laughs> That's not his bag. He's a scientist. Something's fishy, Leonard. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Be careful, Sam. Don't need any anchovies. Which seems like good advice in okay. any context. Uh, good. Yeah, I thought they were all right. Listen, what do I owe you? Catch you next time. Thank you. Hey, have a nice day. All right, you too. Ah, uh, yes, the legendary mechanic villain, Hank. Type fire. I'm sorry about that last bump, Dr. Hale. I hit a hole in the road. What bump? I like I said, Abby's an expert on bumpity bumps. Well, well, it almost knocked my glasses off. <laughs> but that isn't important. We have to make up that lost time. Roger. Smoke, dangerous curves. This is Lazy Rider. Clear the path. I'm a runaway. I repeat, I'm a runaway. What's the problem, Lazy Rider? Buffalo, I got no brakes, buddy. Well, where are you? I'm on Hill 10 and I'm flying. I mean, man, I am coming down on a wing and a prayer. Okay, I got your front door. Now listen close, old buddy. I'm listening. If you can make that straightaway downgrade, then maybe I can help you. Except you're gonna have one tiny little problem. My singing. Yeah, how tiny? Those last hairpin curves right before the straightaway. I just went through them. Ain't nobody ever made it doing over 30. What's your speed? 40 and climbing. Gosh, old buddy. All I can say is I hope we meet again someday on that big highway in the sky. Well, you sure know how to cheer a guy up. Central moving and storage for when you absolutely need to careen down the mountainside. Thank you for that pointless shot of Hale and Stark. <gasps> you know, I agree. Hoo ha!
again, I concur. Don't ever sing again. I'm on the straightaway, buddy. Well, hallelujah and praise the Lord. The real tough problem's just beginning, Lazy Rider. Your speed's gonna build up, and that's about the time you're gonna be coming up on all Buffalo's hindquarters. Go on. So not a straightaway then? Okay, I got you into a rear view. Uh, what's your speed? 60 miles an hour. Oh man, I hope the jolt's easy. I got a very dangerous cargo. Well, now you tell he me. calls his backside cargo? Crates of eggs. I sure hope you like them scrambled. If possible, do avoid coming up on people's mud flaps. So, do you need the ear destroying brake noise? Thank you. Oh, piss off! Sounds uncomfortable. Honk. Oh, sorry. I'm uh, sorry about that ride, Mr. Hale. Looks like the uh, air brakes went out on me. Don't worry about a thing I can get them fixed. Just have to uh, get out the old toolbox. Sounds uh, like a euphemism. Yeah, all right. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that's fine, Sam. Well, I guess you won't be needing me anymore. I got to get rolling. Bill, uh, thanks for saving my neck, buddy. Well, like I said, I owed you one. Well, we're even now. Yeah. But for real, no more singing. Hey, Bill, you take it easy, huh? You too, Lazy Rider. 62 cents a gallon. They're working on Mr. Bean's car. Where's Darren McGavin when you need him? That's not the secret knock. You should stay like that, Sam.
This is where George Lucas got the idea for R2-D2. <laughs> so he spray painted himself? some goggles too What's taking him so long in there? How about you? Mildly interesting. All right, Sam, all right, all right. I'll be on my way as soon as I can dispatch a local bomb squad. But under no circumstances, touch that tripolidine. Or move that truck. As Abby says, one slightest jar to my blow it all to pieces. Believe me, Leonard, I wouldn't move this rig another foot for all the rice in China. Or the maple right, syrup in Vermont. Later. Okay, Abby, look, I'm going to go out there and try and stall him. And please stay out of trouble. I think he's on to us. Well, he'd be a fool if he wasn't after that ploy with the brakes. We gotta know. There's only one way to find out. Throw him a surprise birthday party. Uh, Sam? You? Where are we? Cobbs Junction, uh, just over the city line. Well then, uh, drive to the Valco station. It'll speed up the repair job. Drive without brakes? Well, it's uh, only a block or two. Uh, you can gear down. Uh, no, 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 it's too dangerous. Uh, besides, I'll have these brakes fixed in a minute. He knows. Get me in a position for a shot at the gas tank. The whole town will go up. So the whole town will go up. Along with Casey, the girl, and allegedly yours truly. Ten million Abby, consigned to the status mil. of the girl in the script. All right, but I can't get too close or we'll go up with it. So Sam only survived because Hale shoots like a stormtrooper? Abby, action pants. Sam, stop! Abby, what are you doing? Get out of here! Hale's shooting at the gas tank. If I don't get this rig out of town, there's gonna be no town. Come on, Abby, get off of there! Get off! Good girl. Shimmy, shimmy, go, go, pop. Closer? No, no, stay back. That road's gonna do the job for us. What, it's gonna fire bullets at him? A baker pardon? Out. That we can't have. He's ducked down. Or bailed out the other door. No, no, I would have seen him. Oh, someone check Hale's pacemaker.
Sam goes invisible while he does his duty. He could not have survived. Well, I want to make absolutely sure. He could be hiding somewhere. No way. He was blown to bits. No. This can't be. You're dead? Not really. Well, how would you like to see a ghost punch? Hold it, Casey! Wait a minute, Doctor. That's not gonna work. For your plan to succeed, I had to die in that explosion, right? Now, how are you gonna explain a bullet? Huh? I don't care anymore. Destroyed all my plans. Somehow you've countered my every move. You're like what a bunch of meddling this? kids in a green van. Are you through? Huh? <sighs> Sorry, Doctor. Bad guys finish last. Luther doing his famed Stevie Wonder impression. Doctor, whatever made you think you could get away with this insane scheme? I would have. Except for him. Listen, Driscoll, whatever happens to me, there's, there's something you should know. The man's inhuman. Unnatural. I mean, you saw his jacket, right? He, he vanished. Disappeared right before my very eyes into thin air. You're imagining things, mm -hmm. Doctor. Mm -hmm. Hallucinations no. of a guilty mind. No. No, 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 no. Into thin air, I tell you. The only thing that vanished was the $10 million we spent on this fraud. <laughs> Not funny. Also, I may need a comb. What am I going to tell the Bureau of the Budget? Well, that's no problem, Leonard. There's a bank down the street. So what? So, uh, the chief needs 10 mil. We'll get him 10 mil, right, sweetheart? Oh, sure, Sam. That cracker box is a pushover. That's the take they went with, huh? Now, wait a minute, you two. Be back with the loot in five minutes, Leonard. Sam? Oh, Abby's got a dirty bum. Sam? <laughs> Sorry, Abby. Sam! See? See? He did it again! Inhuman! Thin air! In the thin air, I tell you! Optical illusion! Enunciation! Uh... Sam! Thanks, Harv. Betty Beery. Well, there you have it, folks. Episode 1 officially in the bag. Yeah, so the first episode and the episode that comes later, which was the second part of Riding with Death, I definitely know much better than the rest of the show. Now, I have watched the entire show before, but it was like a decade ago, and it was one time. So basically, for the next several episodes, we're going to be in, I suppose, not uncharted territory for me, but certainly less familiar territory. So it'll be an interesting ride. I do remember a couple small plot points here and there, but I really don't remember the vast majority of the remaining episodes, aside from the one that comes as the second part of Running With Death much later in the show. Anyway, let me know what you think, and I'll see you for episode two soon.